Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by our top trainer and manager, Adam Booth. Adam, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm good, I'm talking really fast, just so the viewers know, Adam's put me on a five minute curfew, if you like, for when the interview's got to finish. So we're gonna go quick fire, if you like. Ryan Martin, new addition to the team. Adam, what did you make of his performance this evening? It's nice, he hasn't boxed for a long time, well over two years, um, but he's had a lot of competitive sparring, and he's improving quite a bit now in the gym. It'd be nice for, for him just to get him out let people see that he still exists as a fighter and that is that there's actually something about him and hopefully that will lead to a couple of regular fights and then straight back into some competition, some real competition over 10 and 12 rounds. When will we see Josh Kelly make his debut and the new deal with Sky Sports and uh, Boxer or Wasserman? So, so Josh's promoter is Wasserman uh, and they're going to be announcing soon the date of his next fight. So I'm not going to piss on their chips. I'll let them announce that. Fair enough. But one person we know is going to be fighting early next year is Mick Conlon, of course, against Lee Wood. Um, big opportunity, particularly if Wood perhaps gets elevated to super champion before that date. How do you sum up that fight? What do you make of it? Great fight. Really excited. Really excited about it. Really looking forward to it. Started our prep already. Um, whether they elevate him or he stays as he is, doesn't matter. The fight's the fight that Mick wants, a great fight at this moment in time. Can't wait for it. Did you expect Lee Wood to beat Can Zhu or, or even come close to doing so? I know Zhu was a big favourite. Um, well, if I'm honest, like, I didn't know a great deal about Can Zhu. I'd seen some of him. I was um, really impressed with Lee Wood and disappointed in Can Zhu. But I think that over his last couple of fights, Lee Wood has sort of evolved. I think his experience is coming out now with a lot of confidence and it makes for a, a great great competition with Mick. Shannon Courtney, a fighter you manage, although not train, didn't have the best of results or the best of preparation it appeared for the last fight. Just tell us your reflections on that. Um, no, I don't want to talk about that too much. Like, she knows what was wrong and what went wrong and she's had an operation. She had to have her ACL reconstructed. So, you know, hopefully her rehab goes quick and smooth and she can get back in and, and get the rematch because there was a rematch clause in the contract. What do you feel she would need to do differently without giving away kind of tactics and stuff? I mean, you're, you're not the man in the corner of her necessarily anyway, but what does she need to do that she didn't do the first time around? I'm not going to answer that in case the other girl watches it. She is a big fan of seconds out, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Isn't everyone? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Um, just to ask you some general stuff about the boxing world at the moment. A lot of people talking about the next move for Tyson Fury. Um, Dillian White not been made WBC mandatory just yet. Fury said recently he's only interested in fights with either AJ or Usyk. Who would you like to see Fury fight next? Usyk. I mean, that's a unification. Tyson, you know, Tyson's in a position now where effectively he can do what he wants, and rightly so, because he was the one that dislodged all the belts from Klitschko. He's gone and had the three fights with Deontay Wilder, WBC champion. AJ's lost to Usyk. So, you know, you've got to say that Tyson's top of the pile and, and he should be able to do what he wants. And I hope that, that, I mean, that unification will be a great fight. What do you make of Canelo Alvarez moving up to Cruiserweight, even if it is only for one fight? Well, Canelo's a, a, a generational fighter with the unique ability to take his skill sets up through the divisions, just like all the greats that we watched over the year, like a Roberto Duran or a Ray Leonard and guys like that. Uh, and Canelo is our modern day version of that. So what, what I make of it is what I make of all the greats moving up in the divisions that, that you know, they seem to be able to be effective as they go up. And we've got to enjoy everything he does while he's doing it. If there's someone out there, either now or in the future, that can beat Canelo, what sort of attributes do you feel they'd need to have? Can't answer that question. I mean, if a lot of people have tried, right? Mayweather beat him, Mayweather fought him when he was 23 years old took him at the right time, but if you look at what Canelo is now, compared to the fight he was when he fought Mayweather, he's a totally different fighter. And because he's pound for pound number one with the proven resume, you can't say this beats him because he's found an answer for every star that's been put in front of him, save for um, Mayweather, who is, was a defensive genius, all-time great, and uh, Alvarez was only 23 when he had that fight. Would the Mayweather of then beat the Canelo of now? Don't know. You don't know. All, all I know is that the Mayweather of then beat the Canelo of then. That's all you can say. That's all you can say. What about Canelo against the prime David Hay as cruiserweight when you were training him? <laughs> I think well, that you know, I think David would have been a little bit too big, a bit too heavy-handed, and a bit too quick for him. Um, 
you know, there's, there's moving up in divisions and f fighting, making shrewd matches, and then there's dangerous matches. And that's, and that's what uh, Canelo's talking about fighting Mukabu, yeah. who's not necessarily a big cruiserweight. Um, and he's not necessarily the biggest punching cruiserweight either. So it, it may, because of the size he's got on Canelo, it makes for a great matchup. Now, one more before I let you go and the uh, alarm starts going off. You're well known for being a big fan of the Four Kings and that era. Is there anyone in boxing now in the current scene that you see that can compare with those sort of guys? Anyone that excites you? Um, Alvarez, uh, Alvarez, Terence Crawford, uh, Virgil Ortiz. I mean, he, he really excites me. He looks like a throwback fighter to those days where they're not just happy winning fights, they want to dominate. And if you look at how Crawford went about the job towards the end of the fight with Porter as well, you know, they're not just champions who want to be champions, they're champions that want to totally dominate and humiliate the other fella, just like the great fighters that we used to watch. So they weren't happy winning on points. They needed to break your will and break you down. And so it's, you know, Canelo, um, Crawford, and I, and I really like Virgil Ortiz as well. Great stuff. Adam, always a pleasure, and um, I think I've made it just before the alarm.